The general level of hotness on set is crazy. We are a very fortunate cast of ladies. I mean, it may be a little biased, but I have to say that out of any show out there, I think we have a beat. They seem to like me with my shirt off. It seems whenever they can write a scene for it, it seems to somehow slide in there. We were actually doing a read through the other day for one of the episodes. I just kind of glanced over and then I was like, wow, some really cute boys on our show. Good job, casting. When the show first started, you know, looking at the character description, it was like, beautiful. And I was kind of like, oh, I'm not. And so I, I went and I think I like tanned a lot. I used like whitening strips and I like worked out like a fiend. Mr. Fitz? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's all right. He's just got this like boyish charm, but he's still sexy. So he's like, it's very hard to be cute and sexy at the same time. And it's like that whole classic fantasy thing when you like your teacher, right? He's got like beautiful bone structure. Like one of, so stupid that jaw is like out of, <laughs> we read many different types for that role, some older, some younger. And when Ian came in, we had narrowed it down to about 10 actors who we really loved, all of whom were very talented. And then we had him come in and read with Lucy. I remember telling uh, Marlene King, one of the executive producers, and Leslie Gladder, who directed the pilot, I was like, the f after the first audition, I was like, that's him. I think in many ways, Ian is Ezra-like. He's a romantic, he's always reading on set. So there is an Ezra-ness to Ian. Part of his look comes from a certain self-awareness that I have to toe the line. You must give up the life you had planned in order to have the life that is waiting for you. Our romantic scenes have been very, it's been very interesting, this whole journey. And I look back on it now, like as we get to the end of season two, where it's gotten to. The pilot in Vancouver I was sitting there, like, brushing my teeth, like, flossing and mouthwash, like, twice. It's so funny. It's, like, two years later, and we're still making out with each other. And now she's lucky if I brush my teeth. What's so funny about the scene where I'm running out in the parking lot to sort of stop him from leaving, and we twirl and kiss, it's so funny because it was actually one of the most awkward scenes for me to film. It was, like, in a back lot on Warren Brothers, and it was outside. It was actually a parking lot, and there were literally tours going around. I felt like a tourist attraction. You know, on paper, obviously, it reads beautifully. It's like, this is like fairy tale romance. But when we were shooting it, like, I was in a short skirt, and I had, like, clunky boots on, and he was stepping on my feet, and, like, everything sort of went wrong. But they sort of edited it, added the right song, lit it nicely, and it's turned out amazing. Drew is actually the complete opposite of Ian in real life. Drew is like very reserved and quiet. We wanted somebody who had a little bit of a, like a darker edge to them. And when we first introduced him on the show, Drew was sort of for Arya to be getting in touch with her darker side a little bit. When people show up in your dreams, it's not because they want something from you, because you want something from them. We were thinking about some sexual tension between Drew's character, Jason, and one, if not more, of the PLLs. Listen, uh, I'm glad I bumped into you. I was hoping we could talk. And Drew brought some edge to that, which was really fun for us. We hadn't had anybody in the show quite like that. We wanted to find someone who had a quiet intensity. The brooding stare that Drew does is very much Drew and just sort of his natural way of connecting with people. Jason and Arya's you know, relationship has kind of grown into something where she understands him. I mean, you, you always did the unexpected, as opposed to me which I also thought was cool. He's like that weird transformation that you haven't seen someone in a long time and he comes back and he's like, wow. Be cool. Are you ready for me? I'm very rarely distracted by the way someone looks. You know, usually I'm just collected, can act with whatever. But initially when I saw him, I was like, like double take, because he's like visually almost flawless. Lucy and I are pretty comfortable with each other. You know, we're good friends. We had never kissed before, so, <laughs> I mean, that's, there's always that little bit of that awkward moment beforehand. I 
think it's really cool that we have such a variety of boys on our show too. We've got the bad boy, we've got Caleb. He's very sweet and he has a sense of side, especially for Hannah. Who you see on your screen is very much who he is. I would say that I have bits of my personality that are similar to Caleb. Nice work. It was easy. They're very similar in a lot of ways. I feel like I have some wittiness to me. Maybe they have different mating rituals in your book club. Maybe a slight streak of bad boy. We had narrowed it down to like five or six guys and they all came in and read with Ashley Benson. He came in, he read, he was really good and he just seemed like a Caleb. We all knew in the room too that that was a lot of magic that those guys had. They were really flirting with each other in the room. Events occur for both Hannah and Caleb that do bring them closer together and one of them being he finds out who his real mom is and that's huge for him. She did apologize for taking so long to find me. That was a very emotional scene to film, and it was one of those moments as an actor where everything else around you goes away. And then she said that my, that my voice sounds just like my father's. We were all crying on set that day. There wasn't a dry eye because he really brought so much to his performance. elements of him remind me of Toby just because he is so sweet and, you know sometimes he's kind of quiet until you get to know him you know he has these really intense eyes and sometimes feelings are a little bit cloudy so you're like are you okay okay you're okay right all right he was mysterious brooding the black cat of Rosewood was the way they described it and I love that because my power animal it's a panther so immediately I was like that I like I feel like I can understand this kid the first season, we played him much more as a misfit and sort of the Boo Radley. And then once our characters fell in love with him, the audience, I think, was seduced as well. Emily, did you see how easy it was for us to get back to this place? It'll always be like that. His eyes just draw you in. And there's a sort of mystery about them. you just kind of like, whoa, you get sucked in. I remember the first time that I had to kiss Troyan. I couldn't sleep the night before. I was so worried. It was like the first time that I had ever kissed a girl on a TV show. And I was so, I was so nervous. My first kissing scene with Keegan was outside of the motel room when it kisses me in front of the car. I woke up that morning and was deathly ill. And I mean, not pretty ill. Before we started doing the scene, she started eating an apple and she's like, Bleh, it's all good, you're fine. And I was like panicked. I was like so nervous. I was like eating gum and mints and things. And, and he was very, very nervous about it. And he was very excited about it. And I was just like, I need more Kleenex. Like this poor boy, like give me more Kleenex. It was not pretty. And he was very polite. And he said that it was a lovely kiss. And I was like, you're absolutely insane because right now my nose is like bright red and I'm about to pass out on you. We, we high-fived afterwards. Like, after we did the kiss, I remember I was like, high-five, and like, Borat high-fived her. Look, maybe we should both enjoy the fact that those pretty big things are over. The first time we had a shirtless scene, it was Toby, and I didn't have any idea what was under that shirt of his. Every time that it's, it's happened to anybody on the show, when there has to be any kind of awkward clothes displacement, everyone starts to laugh and go, ooh. Hey, you have that freak out moment of, oh my God, I'm not gonna like do this, that, and the other thing, and I need to work out every day. You know, I panic a little bit, just because it's very vulnerable to have your shirt off in front of millions of people. We get the script a week ahead of time, usually, so, I'm not gonna suddenly look like one of the guys from 300 in a week. Well, I ask that they let me know as far in advance as possible so I can change my diet and start doing some crunches because I don't exercise and I don't really watch what I eat. He was like in these little bathing suit shorts and I think he was just a little embarrassed to be in front of all the crew and close to nothing and me. Some actors are more self-conscious than others, but our actors don't seem to be. They enjoy it. Take your clothes off. My personal experience from being on the show has just been nothing but positive. I've worked on many shows, and I'd say the chemistry here is one of the best. And they're also like really good people. I mean, everybody's like, oh, you're like, 
The cast is so good looking, but they're like really good people. They're nice on the set, off the set, with their shirts on, with their shirts off. We'll take them however they want to come to us. I'm very grateful to have them all on the show and grateful for their hard work. And we can't wait to see, you know, what they bring to the party for season three.